help them. We're going to cover some very, very key areas here today. Um, as I mentioned on our radio show today, this is not some hype. This is not going to be, this is what you need to do. Just go out and get a doc that will do testosterone with you. This is your answer. It's all about testosterone. We're going to cover very vital areas. Hormone, what's the hormone issues? What are the hormonal influences here? What's the role of testosterone, estrogen, sex hormone binding globulin? You say, well, that's too much for me. I don't understand it. No, it's not too much for you. You will understand it because I'm going to keep it in very simplistic terms. If you don't, then you need to set up a time. You could be a wife, a spouse watching this. Then you need to set up a time with Joyce or myself, our staff, consultation-wise, and then we can step you through the specifics. If you're a guy and you're watching this and you don't quite get a grip, just get the overview. Don't, don't get too caught up in the minutia because I don't know that it's just this always. I don't know if it's just vascular issues. I don't know that it's just stress hormones. I don't know that it's just blood flow issues or if it alone is just lifestyle. But I guarantee you that in most cases it's a combination of maybe two or three of these scenarios. So we will discuss today <coughs> excuse me, the hormonal influences vascular disease, blood flow characteristics. I know I have these two. It looks like it's a, you know, two in the same, but it's not. There's going to be some things that are going on at a vascular level that your vasculature is damaged or diseased, and we've got to improve that issue. Then there's a blood flow characteristic. Some of us just have thick, clotty blood. Now, if you're a medical practitioner, you're going to want to turn me off and say, that's ridiculous. I've never heard of that. That is the most, no, it's not. Many eat horribly the wrong fats, too much white, too much refined, too much sugar. Your blood is more coagulable. You don't take adequate supplementation or quality supplements. Your blood flow characteristics are bad. You've got vascular disease issues. What about stress hormones? How does cortisol, DHEA, play into this? Does it affect a man's ability to perform? You bet your bottom dollar then what just about a simple, simple component of lifestyle? And I don't even know how to say this. Just what's your lifestyle? Are, do you have weight? Are you overweight? Do you eat too many of the wrong types of fats? Do you drink? Do you realize that as you drink and you drink too much alcohol, it forces conversion of sex hormone binding globulin that literally binds up your testosterone, which will diminish your sex drive. So if your husband drinks five or six beers at night, and he's, he's going to have a problem sooner or later. There's no question about it. Because in his liver, there's a conversion process that's driving up that specific area, sex hormone binding globulin. It'll affect his ability to perform. And what about medication? Are some of you on medications, antihypertensive, beta blockers, angiotensin converting drugs? Are medications implicated? Absolutely. You say, well, then I'm dead in the water because I got high blood pressure. And I'm on, you know, whatever, metoprolol or atenolol. So I'm on some of those drugs, so I'm dead. I'm done. No, you're not. You're not dead in the water. Let's try to do some things that can counteract those effects. Let's do some things that can counteract those issues. And there are. If you, if you need to make lifestyle changes, improve blood flow, balance your hormones, we can offset some of this in many cases. Well, I hope you're ready to dive into this. A little bit of the teaching we're going to give... Um, maybe after the break or whatever, whenever I just feel led. It's going to be about uh, the book of Obadiah. I talked about this this past week. Obadiah, the teaching is powerful. It's a simplistic message. It's one chapter in the Old Testament. And it really centers and focuses on, we often believe and perceive that um, someone or others or people are getting away with things and those that are attempting or trying to live a godly or a, 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 let's just say, a life following God, and you're getting tripped up and knocked down, or someone has abused you and taken advantage of you, and we feel as though it's not right, and it's not. But here's the takeaway message from the book of Obadiah, my interpretation. Don't mess with my kids. That's basically what God was saying. And he was very specific to the descendants of Esau, the Edomites. The Edomites were strong, fierce, tough, hard-nosed people. They were smart. They were bright. They were intelligent. They were warriors. They built literally their city 
into a hillside. It says that the Bible says into the cleft of a rock. They, they built it into this hillside. They were amazing people. But, but, but God allows them to be destroyed. Why? Because they turned their back on the children of Israel. They turned their back on Israel. On God's people. They allowed them to be destroyed. To be looted. To be ransacked. They didn't lift a finger and they mocked. And God said basically indirectly. Don't mess with my kids. If you do. They're going to pay a price. And that's a message for you and I today. We may think. We may think. That, right, that wrongs are never going to be righted. They will. The book of Obadiah teaches that. You could be a believer. You could be an unbeliever. I don't know what your background is. There's a powerful message. Don't mock others when they're down. God said vengeance is his. And we're going to see the Edomites were destroyed as a people. So I'm not here to talk about, you know, death and destruction to those. I, no. And I'm not saying that everybody, that's, I'm not trying to say anything other than you need to have confidence in the knowledge that if you follow him and that you trust him, you need to continue to abide and remain and follow and trust him. God will take care of the rest. You don't have to take it into your own hands. He'll take care of it. The book of Obadiah, Obadiah teaches us so. All right, let's get into this. You ready? Josiah, we ready? ready. Rock it. We're over the next camera. Give me the signal. Boom. Move over to the other camera. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. I cleaned up this board. I sprayed some of those nice chemicals on here today. Sprayed a little on Josiah. He likes the chemical smell. Something... Weird about that guy. Now, you know what? I sprayed. Look, I, I want to tell you. Now, I want you. <laughs> I'm just being sarcastic. Um, I just want you to know that whatever it is I spray on this board, I'm not going to spray anymore because now I can't even wipe the board off. So I don't know what kind of. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. All right. Good deal. Um, maybe we need a new board. <laughs> And it is cold out there, and this is stored in our shed because we don't have room here in our offices. So as I always say, a bit of a labor of love. Okay, here we're, here we're going to go. Let's go hormonal. Is erectile dysfunction a man's inability to perform? Is it all hormonal? We see on TV that it's all about low T in essence. Low T, low T, low T. So much so that now... Um, even the traditional medical community has soured on this concept because now everybody's coming, you know, guys are coming <clears throat> and they want, they want testosterone from their physicians or their medical practitioners. So now we have almost an onslaught. Oh, well, it's bad for you. Testosterone's bad for you. One article recently in the past six months tried to come out and say that it induces heart disease. Uh, not true, by the way. Not true. Not the time for us to deal with that, uh, but it's not true. The, the, if you go back, you do an analysis, uh, that did not bear out. Actually, the literature shows the opposite, that the lower your testosterone, the greater the incidence of uncontrollable high blood pressure, higher incidence of type 2 diabetes onset, higher incidence of insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, weight gain in through the middle, tendencies towards uh, diabetes, high triglycerides, cholesterol imbalances. So the list goes on. The artery walls in those that have low and no testosterone are much firmer. They're not nearly as elastic. That's what the literature really says, contrary to the nonsense sometimes that we see. Be careful what you see on the nightly news. Hormonal. So is there a role here for hormones? Yes. So my answer is going to be yes to that. So check mark. Is it the only answer? No. Does it play? Yes. Is that the only aspect that we should consider with erectile dysfunction? Absolutely not. Here's what else we have to know. We have to know what a man's testosterone levels are. So we need to have that done. We should know what his free testosterone levels are. Say, well, my doc won't do it. Let, just take in the information, please. Don't get caught up in the minutia. Number three, what's your estrogen levels? <clears throat> Did you know that a guy makes estrogen too? Yes, you do. Or yes, he does. Is it all bad? No. What if he makes too much? Yes, bad. Bad news. Is it all about testosterone? No. I could be making adequate levels of testosterone, have very low free testosterone, have very high levels of estrogen, and I'm going to have problems even though I have very normal levels of testosterone. You need someone to help you evaluate it. I want to clarify is it all hormones? Not necessarily. 
Do I have to have an understanding of how this all works? You bet your bottom dollar. Sex hormone binding globulin. <clears throat> if it is high, it is binding up or a, a kind of accumulating your testosterone, not letting your testosterone be available for use, guys. Okay. Um, just as a general term, beyond the age of 40 or 45, I can't remember exactly, there's typically about a 40% increase in sex hormone binding globulins. General tendency. So as we age, is it just about this? So you go to the doc, you tell him, hey, I think I want that testosterone. The commercial says that it works. So the you know, doc relents. He doesn't want to hear you anymore. You're aggravating him. You're pestering him. Put you on testosterone. It doesn't seem to work. Oh, I did that. The testosterone doesn't work. Uh, uh, uh. You could have had some imbalances in these other guys. You could have been making too much sex hormone binding globulin, and we could have loaded you with testosterone, and it's not going to work because we haven't freed up the testosterone. Does that make sense? Or I'm converting it to estrogen. So some key components are, is to understand this area. <clears throat> you say, Joe, all this stuff is nonsense, way beyond me. I, that's, that's why we're teaching this. So it, even though it may seem beyond you, and you may not grasp this whole scenario, I want you to have an overview. The message should be clear. That <clears throat> I've got to have an understanding, and then you need to see counsel. Well, who am I going to see? Well, that's what we're available for. We can do consultations. We do consultations. We'll make sure that you get the right labs ordered, then do an evaluation so that you have a better understanding of what's going on. Hormones, the whole answer, no. Are they involved? Yes. It's more about the balance and distribution, as you can see. So I could have, in some cases, kind of moderate or even mediocre testosterone levels, not that high, but because of my lifestyle, how I take care of myself, how I supplement, how I eat, and don't drink, et cetera, et cetera, and manage my weight, I could have very nice levels of free testosterone, good thing. Now remember, I'm saying I could have very mediocre, mid-level ranges of testosterone. If I do all the good things, my estrogen is not high, my estrogen is moderate or low, good thing. Because of my positive lifestyle and how I eat and what I'm doing, keeping my weight, managing my weight, I take some key supplements. We'll close with that. Um, my sex hormone binding globulins are not high. They're kind of mid-range or low mid-range because you can't have none of that. So you're never supposed to not have any of this or any of this, right? They're, 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 they're physiologic. They're biologic. They're meant for our bodies. They're meant to be there. It's just a matter of what are they? <clears throat> Making sense. So, testosterone could be moderate, mid-range, or even a little bit low. But I have good free testosterone. I have lower estradiol, lower sex hormone binding globulin. You should be good to go from a hormonal standpoint. So, do you see why I say you can't just add in testosterone and wait for miracles? And then, when the miracles don't occur, you can't be frustrated with it because you need to have counsel and direction about specifically what to do with those numbers once you have them. So you don't just go get testosterone. Do we recommend testosterone? We sure do. In specific cases, you see what's going on, but we got to manage the other areas. So the hormonal aspect of this. What about the next area in erectile dysfunction? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk. Sorry about that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Vascular issues. I don't want to use the word disease, but vascular issues. So what am I talking about? It is about the arterial beds. There's your arteries. So if I make bad decisions from a dietary standpoint, I don't have plenty of antioxidants supplementation-wise. I'm not getting much in the way of antioxidants in my diet. I don't have some key supplements that protect these vascular beds. What happens is there's a lot of irritation. I'm going to use the word inflammation that occurs on these vascular beds. So from that, I can start to develop atherosclerosis. 
I can develop more hardening of the artery walls, these tiny vascular beds. Now, why is that important? When I have damage here, and there's nutrients that can help with this, I don't have accommodation. These artery walls don't open up the way they're supposed to accommodate. So that can lead to things like high blood pressure. All right? But the real key is here then, when I have vascular issues, I then can have diminished blood flow. Now, can there be valvular issues? A lot of guys have issues where sometimes those valves are damaged. You literally almost have like a, as the blood flows in and goes into the corpus cavernosum to, so for a guy to have an erection and maintain an erection, you literally have to have almost like a closure so that the blood doesn't backlog out. Now, there, there's some other structural things that, and that there's no way to correct that. But, you know, you need to know that that's a possibility. But you've got to exhaust these other areas before you start, start talking about very high-tech um, physical issues, structural rather, okay? Vascular. I could have <clears throat> poor blood flow as a result of damage and inflammation here. So what happens? I've got to supplement well. I I've got to eat correctly. I've got to exercise. I've got to move. Why? Because all of this helps to protect and reduce this issue so that now I have a healthier vascular bed instead of trauma and irritation and diminishment of blood flow I am doing good things and I have better blood flow characteristics okay so we start off with hormones we talk about the vascular issues there are vascular I'm, I'm blowing through this pretty quickly I don't want to make this a long drawn out process um, the vascular issues in my mind are a lot more of a problem than we would realize. And the reason why I say that, so what else would be another terminology for this? And we would say, you know, cardiovascular disease. You know, cardio, you say, wait a minute, you're talking about the heart now? I thought we were talking about erectile dysfunction. Hold on. Cardiovascular, right? You gotta look, you gotta look at the whole process, disease. That has to do with the cardio system, cardiac system because it's all tied. It's all tied together. This is all about blood flow. This is about blood getting fr oxygenated blood that's been oxygenated in the lungs, sent back to the heart. The heart's pumping out, and we want to distribute nutrients and oxygen to the rest of my body. When there's an impairment of that, I have a huge problem. And it all comes down to diet. It comes down to poor supplements. It can come down to stress, etc. So you could have underlying cardiovascular disease. Okay? And that's why you're having some erectile dysfunction issues, unfortunately. So literature actually shows us that signs of ED for some guys, early signs, are actually a sign of early onset cardiovascular disease. So it gets a little spooky and it gets a little tough here because it's a little scary because you say, wait a minute, so you're saying if I'm having some ED or my husband's having some ED issues, it could be an early sign of heart disease. Yes, you can. Because why? Because we have, these are, small, these are small tributaries as opposed to the large vasculature. It's beginning to show up in the microvasculature before it's showing up in the larger vessels, okay? So it can be an early sign of cardiovascular issues. We're going to cover one more area, then we're going to go to a break. <clears throat> we come back from the break, we'll cover the last couple areas. So what have we covered so far? My little cheat sheet. Um, vascular disease, the hormonal issues, and um, let's talk about meds real quick. Medications. Can meds create problems? Yes, there's a whole host of, of errors. So well, I'm gonna, just going to take them right down the line. Antihypertensives to treat hypertension. Now they could be beta blockers, they could be calcium channel blockers, there could be multiple classes of medications, even diuretics sometimes are problematic, are problematic for guys. How about antidepressants? Some guys are on antidepressants for uh, generalized <clears throat> anxiety disorders or depression. Or you could be on sedatives, <clears throat> hypnotics for sleep issues. I mean, the list kind of goes on. 
So you could be, have high blood pressure, you could have depression, you could have anxiety states, uh, you might have sleep disturbances, and you could be on one, two, or three, or some of these meds. You need to know that medications, and some of, unfortunately, antipsychotic meds are a big problem here as well. All right. So medications certainly are problematic. If you're on the meds, we can't stop or negate completely what the medication from a pharmacology standpoint is doing in the body. But what you can certainly do is to make sure all these other areas are more in check and they're being managed because if they're being managed, then you have less and less of an impact of this area as well. All right, so medications. We've covered meds. Um, what do you say we go to a break? When we come back, <clears throat> I'm going to cover... All right, so we've covered meds, we've covered vascular disease, we've covered the hormonal aspects of this. When we come back, I'm going to talk a little bit about stress. I'm going to talk a little bit about just blood flow, improving blood flow. How do we improve blood flow? We're going to go into the nutrient aspects. And then what are some supplementation issues that can be helpful? And what about, you know, whether it's DHEA, what about, we need to understand that it, stress could be playing a huge role. We can't stop your stress. I can't stop your work environment, what's going on at work, or the demands at work, or family, or finance. I know that. Or maybe working two jobs. But it's critical that we understand what that is and that stress can affect me. And then what do I try to do or implement that reduces some of the trauma of that stress? When we come back with a couple more areas, just two quick areas to cover. And then we're going to give you a little bit of a summary sheet, uh, summary thought as to what you can do nutrient-wise to be helpful. Slip away to a break. It'll be just a couple of minutes. We're coming back. We're going to wrap this. I know we got some good things in store. Stay with us. With us. Man, we're going to close this out. We're going to help you guys. I mean it. If, if you'll just follow this, you'll be blessed. Um, it's going to help you. And you might be able to help someone else. I, I hope there are some spouses, some gals that are watching uh, to understand uh, that you, you can provide some benefit to your husband. This is a very sensitive area for guys. Um, a, a guy's inability in this area affects their psyche. Then their psyche pounds out more stress hormones with further depletes their ability to be effective in this area. It's a problem for guys, it, for many. And a lot of it is lifestyle, which we'll cover. Before we get to that, the book of Obadiah. I want to talk to you for just one moment about that. I said earlier, don't mess with my kids. That's kind of the takeaway. It's also about pride. It's about justice. Pride on the behalf of uh, the Edomites, descendants of Esau, and just the destructive nature that they put forth and how they didn't help um, the people of Israel and the children of Israel. Pride. They were self-sufficient. They were confident. They were strong. They had it going on, bottom line. They were smart people. They were ingenious people. They were tough, hard-nosed people, self-sufficient. So much so that when God's people needed help, they mocked, they laughed, they let them be overrun. So we learn a couple of things. It's all through the book. It's all through the Proverbs. God hates pride, number one. God hates self-sufficiency, number two. He doesn't want us to be sufficient on ourselves. He wants us to be dependent upon him. Number two, justice is his, not ours. Ju as a nation, justice will come from and via God. Vengeance is certainly his. Thirdly, you need to know that if you're a child of the king, that he is with you, that he knows, that he understands, and ultimately, his kids are not to be messed with. Let me just give you a quick rundown. I'm just going to read a couple. You got the background. I told you what happened. I'm not going to go into all the detail. Um, children of Israel, in essence, needed God's help. They didn't receive it from the Edomites. The Edomites stood by, watched, then mocked, then ridiculed. Here's what God has to say about it. You should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster, nor gloat over them in their calamity in the days of their disaster, nor seize their wealth. Bottom line is sometimes bad things are going to happen. They've happened to me. I'm sure they've happened to you. The day of the Lord is near for all nations. As you have done, it'll be done unto you. 
solid teaching in here that we need to be careful how we treat, how we act, what we do to others. The Bible is very clear. What we do can come back on our own heads. It happened to the Edomites, clearly. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and drink and be as if they never had been. Here's Israel's restoration. I believe it's Israel, but it's a, it's a parallel to us as well. But on Mount Zion, which is always a clear indicator of Jerusalem, his holy hill, God's people, God's terrain, those that belong to him, there will be deliverance. It will be holy. And Jacob will possess his inheritance. Jacob will be a fire. Joseph a flame. But Esau will be a stubble. And they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau. People from the Negev will occupy. And it goes on and on in the land of the Philistines. And God just goes through and says, this is what's going to happen because of your disregard for my people. Know that God's not mocked. You're not, someone's not getting away with it. God's people will be protected eventually. Deliverance will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau and the kingdom will be the Lord's. One, literally one chapter. Take some time to read through it. Some powerful teachings in there. When we want to get down and depressed that things are just going bad, you need to go over and read about the Edomites and see what happened to the descendants of Esau for their mocking, their bad attitudes, and how they handled others and how they turned on God's people and it came back on their heads as well. Let's get back to our teaching. Hope that encourages you. Stress, erectile dysfunction. You guys are under a lot of stress. Bad news. Well, Joe, I'm done. I just wasted, you know, 30 minutes of watching this thing because you're telling me now that, that it's, it's, I'm, I'm dead in the water. No, you're not. Um, what we have to know is, is that we can manage this. We can manage the stress. High stress, high cortisol will, will, will be damaging. It drops our DHEA. It's damaging. Under high levels of stress, we produce a lot of inflammatory proteins. Tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-10. We produce more um, stress hormone or adaptive adrenals. Norepinephrine, epinephrine constricts blood vessels. So high stress damages and creates an imbalance. High stress will interfere with a guy's ability to perform. So what do we do? We've got to get you guys exercising. I got to get you moving. Go buy that dog, please. Go walk. Go do something. I've got to get, go get a, a stationary bike. I've got to get you moving to attempt to disperse this. You, you're too busy. You don't have time. You need to start reading some Psalms. You need to read the scripture. I don't care if you have to have teaching tapes in your vehicle. You've got to have praise music in your car. If you can't find a way, I got, yesterday was like a day full of stress, literally. It was an intense difficult day of stress, some miscommunication. We got behind the eight ball and some issues that we had. It was just nothing but a day of distress, seriously. And I, and I felt like my heart was racing. I was getting palpitations at the end of the day. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I'm not, we're not going to get this done. Reality of it is we did. I was too tired when I went home to work out, but I guarantee I'm working out today. I guarantee I'm working out tomorrow. Why? I know that I've got to balance these things for goodness sake. I'm not sitting here in some ivory tire and telling you what to do. This is application for me. I've got to do this. I, I, last night, what did I do? I was in there reading the scripture. I was reading 2 Timothy last night. I was reading the gospel of John last night. I was reading about abiding and remaining in him. Why? Because I could just sense that things just spiraling out and me just getting caught up and I... I, I, sometimes we have to reel ourselves back in and you do it through the scripture. Physical activity and exercise. Don't compromise how you eat. Know that sometimes weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We, we have to know that we're going to confront stress, guys. It is there. What I do to combat it is what's key. Do I supplement well? Do I do something like the adrenal essentials? Do I take some DHEA to counteract some of these stress hormones? Because when cortisol is punching out because of stress, DHEA is dropping and all these inflammatory things are going to have more impact on my circulatory system, which will impair your ability to perform. You got to counteract it. Get you on some sublingual, sublingual DHEA. Okay? Exercise, 
scripture, counterbalance some of the stress components, try to get some sleep. If you're not sleeping, bad thing. I take sleep essentials. Get on some sleep. I need you to sleep. I need you to repair. Okay? I can't make this go away in your life no more than you could have made it go away for me yesterday or during the course of my problem, you know, difficulties with employees. I, I say that all to you all the time. You don't want to hear it. I know you don't because you got your own set of issues. I know that. Just try to start implementing some of the things that we're talking about here. Because you could take testosterone. You could do Varilla Max till the cows come home. You could do Perfusia Plus till the cows come home. And if we're not managing this, you're going to say, what Joe told me to do didn't work. And it's not necessarily true. It's not. If I don't deal with this, this will override this. Does it make sense? Okay. Stress. All right. Here's my cheat sheet. Stress. Okay, we talked about atherosclerosis. We talked about uh, circulatory issues, vascular distress. Lastly, just blood flow. Okay. If I can change my diet, and I, you're gonna, you hear this message, and almost everything we talk about, it comes back to this. If I stop eating all those bad fats, deep frieds, etc. I eat more fruits, more vegetables. I take quality supplements. Oh, there you go. You're selling me. No, I'm not. Don't take them. It's up to you. Now, seriously, it's up to you. I take them. They work for me. Sorry. All right. Supplementation, buffered C, perfect E, omegas. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. I've got to eat right. Why? Because the bad fats high sugars, see all of these things will impair blood flow. I got no other way to say it. So when you see those nonsense commercials about just loading up on testosterone, then you go use it and it doesn't work and your doc tells you you're going to get heart disease and everything's problematic and you're going to get prostate cancer, which is not true by the way if you're doing this correctly and all that stuff. But before you jump into the testosterone cascade, you have to know that your lifestyle, your stress levels, how you eat and what you do are going to impair blood flow. So every time you want to have another beer, you need to be thinking hmm, something about my liver. Yeah, I'm going to make more estrogen, which is going to interfere with my testosterone work, by the way, guys. I'm going to make more sex hormone binding globulin, which is going to bind up my testosterone, which I won't have available to do work for me. Um, I'm going to get a little fatter, which is bad because I'm going to synthesize and make more estrogen in my fat cells. I mean, it's just, a, it's a bad thing. Don't drink. I don't know what else to tell you. Well, it relaxes me. We got to find something else to relax you and not the beer. Okay. Am I being harsh, Joe? Is that harsh? No, that's facts. Okay. That's fact. Have a beer. Don't have four beers. Okay. Sugars, junk. Every time you want to keep eating the cake and you want to eat a half a bag of cookies, you got to know that's a problem. You know, you love French fries and you love wings. You got to know that's going to be a problem. You tell me you don't like vegetables. I hear that all the time from guys. I know you guys you need to develop some disciplines, man. I mean, seriously, you need to develop some disciplines. I don't like vegetables. Bad news. You got to eat more vegetables. You got to eat fruit. Eat apples. Bring oranges with you to work. Eat raw nuts. You know, raw nuts are amazing. You know why? Walnuts, almonds, so on. They're loaded with the good forms of folic acid. You know what they do to your artery walls? They open them up. Seriously. That helps you to make more nitric oxide. What do you think perfusia does? It's L-arginine. It's an amino acid. The plus, you know why it's the plus? Because it's got a specific form of folate, folic acid. Methylene tetrahydrofolate. Guess what's in raw nuts and seeds? Methylene tetra, form of that. Folic acid. So look. Here's your blood vessel wall. I, use, I, I, I take this or I eat foods that have good forms of folic acid, opens up your artery walls, blood flow. Am I making sense here, man? Just making, are you paying any attention? Just size not paying it. The picture looks good. The pictorial did it. All right. Making sense, man. Let's go blood flow. Let's increase your blood flow. You've got to change your dietary characteristics. I know we're running out of time. And I know I'm going to start boring you here any minute, so I'm going to get right to the end here. What was last? All right, blood flow. We talked about stress. Well, I covered lifestyle. I was going to cover lifestyle. I think a lifestyle for many guys, 
is a, is a big thing. And if, if, if I can get you moving, I don't even care if I get you to go out and, and walk, go to the pool. I don't have time. Go walk the dog. Go walk. Go do something. Go take a 20-minute walk. It'll help you. If I get you to cut down on alcohol, cut down on the amount of beer, remember, you will decrease, decrease sex hormone binding globulin. You will decrease estrogen. It'll help you. If I can get you cutting back on sugars, bad fats, all this will increase blood flow. If I can get you to manage your stress levels better, it can't go away. How do we manage it? What do we use as a standard? The scripture, the word of God, physical activity. Sometimes you need to just go take a walk and you need to just go pray. You need to get along with, along with God just to help you deal with and center you with what the, tur the turmoil that goes on around you. It will affect your performance and your ability in the, in the privacy of your own home. Exercise, activity, your lifestyle has everything to do with this. Big time, all right? Big time. So your lifestyle can improve blood flow. What you eat and consume can affect. And here's the other thing. If I'm overweight and then I make more bad choices from a dietary standpoint, I develop what's called insulin resistance. We've talked about this. This comes up multiple, so this is not multiple sclerosis, this is metabolic syndrome. More insulin resistance, higher insulin, that is gonna drive you to hypertension, high blood pressure, type two, all these characteristic issues. But all of this will indirectly create ED. It all ties. So many of these issues, I, I can almost always draw it back to some core, central, fundamental approaches of everything that you do. All right, how do we supplement? What do we do? Well, I, I think first and foremost for you guys, let's get you on some DHEA. It's 20, that's 25, by the way. Sublingual. <laughs> Just is laughing at me. DHEA, 25 milligrams, sublingual every morning. Let's do it. Number two, let's get you on some Perfusia Plus. Two, twice a day. Why the plus? It's not just L-Arginine. It's time release, but it's got that methyl tetrahydrofolate. I don't know what that is. It's folic acid. It's one that your body uses well, quickly. Let's do something called Virillo Max. Okay, why? It's interesting. Marapama. Ginseng. You know, there's some studies just on Korean ginseng alone improving. Why? Because it's adaptogenic. It helps your adrenals, helps your stress response. Right? All making sense? Well, it's, it's comboed in here in Virilimax. It's, it's an excellent product. So we've got Myropama, you've got colon nut, you've got maca, tribulus terrestris, Korean ginseng. <gasps> I heard tribulus terrestris is bad for you. No, it's not. Standardized extracts, they're clean herbs. They can help you. Varilla Max. I don't know what the dose is on this. You know, one or two twice a day. All right? So Perfusia Plus, DHEA, Varilla Max. So, Joe, where, where are you going with this? Well, I mean, I, you, you, you do some basics and then you supplement. Lastly, believe it or not, our Prostate Plus Essentials, or even maybe a step-down version of this, which is a little less expensive and not quite as potent, but our Saul Palmetto Plus, not plain Saul Palmetto. Why? Because in this, I have stinging nettles, along with Saul Palmetto, purified extracts, along with African Pygene. But what's key? You know what stinging nettles does? I kept talking to you about sex hormone binding globulin. I mean, that even sounds bad. Binding globulins, right? Binds up my testosterone. Guess what stinging nettles does? And guess what good forms of zinc are zinc essentials? 100% absorbable. Guess what they do? Zinc essentials can block an aromatase enzyme, or slow it down. I shouldn't say block. It'll reduce it. So you won't convert as much of your testosterone to estrogen, and you won't convert as much of your testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which enlarges your prostate. It also helps to reduce sex hormone binding globulin formation. So does stinging nettles. Stinging nettles is in 
either one of these two agents. So if you're having difficulties, this is good for you any way, any way you cut it. I do it anyway. Stress. Perfusia, blood flow. Virilomax, just a couple components all in one to help. Then you might even want to throw in some zinc essentials. You give this a couple of months, you change your lifestyle, you get more vegetables. You should be on buffered C, you should be on omegas, and you should be on some perfect D. You should be on a basic, basic core supplement regimen. If that's not helping, then come these guys. Start here. Add this, and then add that. And if we get some labs done, and you got high sex hormone binding globulins, we're going to go to some zinc and some Saul Palmetto Plus. All right? I think we covered it. Covered lifestyle. We covered, we're back to the middle. We covered, um, sure. all right? I know we went over again, but who cares? I hope you get something out of this. I, you could be 40. You could be 50. You could be 60. Say, well, it's too, it's too late. I can't. This is not going to help me. Now, yes, it will. It most certainly will. The body is amazing in its ability to remodel, to rebuild, and to restore. If you'll invest, let's get you sleeping right. <clears throat> let's get you dealing with the stress. Right? It doesn't go away. How do we cope with it? Do I do a couple nutrients that help to counteract the stress? Am I in the scripture? Am I taking some walks and I'm talking to God and I'm bearing my soul and I'm laying it out before him? I need your help. I can't do this on my own. I'm not capable of this on my own. Let your pride go. I, if, if anybody's a prideful person or has battled that, it's me. And if, and if one thing in the last five, six, seven years God has dealt with is my pride pride. God has broken me and humbled me in numerous, numerous situations. And I've, I've, because I've failed to learn that I've not, I've got to let go of the pride. So I'm just telling you the truth. This is, I'm being very honest. God has allowed me to scrape my knees and literally get beat up because of my arrogance and my pride. And the only way that I can begin to deal with that is to get this way. More self-sufficient I am, the more my legs get taken out. The more dependent I am, I see things happening. The more I wanna take it on myself, I can do it, I can handle it, I figure this out, I figure everything out, the more I fall on my face. I believe God teaches me in little man, in little situations in my life where pride is creeping in and it's, and it's a stumbling block. It's a stumbling block to my relationship with Him, my growth with Him, and my ability to be effective witness for Him. Pride. Be careful of pride, guys. Don't be prideful. View this. Learn from this. Your lifestyle plays. Exercise, physical activity, how you eat. Nutrients can be helpful. There's not a single answer. Just go get your low T dealt with. If you have to go back and rewatch this so that you get an understanding of estrogen, you don't have to understand the detail. You just must understand that this is much more complicated than just putting you on testosterone. And maybe when you've gone on it, if it didn't work, why it didn't work. Or maybe if you just got, went on to Viagra or Cialis or whatever, and maybe it works, maybe it didn't. <clears throat> why? Because there's other underlying issues, blood flow, vascular issues. So this is really about your health. So I believe a man's inability to perform is also tied directly to a poor state of health. So you can take that, hopefully in the spirit that it's meant, Let's change your life and your lifestyle, improve your overall health, and I believe other things fall into place as well. God bless you. Thanks for being with me. Hey, turn some others on to this. I think it can help them. I hope it helps you. God bless, man. Thanks for being with us. Boom.